data. So what is data? Data is kind of an elusive concept, but it's not very difficult to define or understand some basic definitions of data. Often when we're talking about computers and in the computer domain, data is conceived as the zeros and ones stored in the computer. And to some extent that's right, although it's not really zero, zeros and ones, it's more like on and off, turned on, turned off. It's just one state versus another state. Um, and this information, this code, this zeros and ones on or off and this sequence of it is stored in the microchip of the computer, stored and processed in the microchip of the computer. Um, so we can think of the data in some more uh, kind of abstract terms as zeros and ones. And we can think of it as some more concrete or material terms as in the information in the microchip of that is being processed in the computer. And we can also, of course, think about data in, in its kind of role in a social activity. So this is the data here. When we usually talk about data, we're actually talking about this kind of data here, which is reliable recorded information. That's the major definition of data of how people usually use the term data. It's reliable, meaning it's carefully studied and captured. It's not just willy-nilly some people getting some information from somewhere. It's reliable, meaning carefully studied and captured. And it's recorded somewhere. It's recorded in a database. It's recorded with some kind of uh, structure and methodology that it can be understood. And here we have, for example, in the format we talked about earlier, the two-dimensional table of rows um, and columns. Now, here is actually the table structure. So this is not actually the, the data itself, but you can see all of the attributes that would be capture of the data. And um, and here, those the types of the attributes that are captured of the data. So for example, in a hospital setting, you're capturing name, address, state, city, country, contact, mobile phone of that person and so on of the records you kept or you're keeping. So this is one, uh, so the different vari the different variations of how we talk about data. I wanted to show an image here and I'm gonna invite you to actually go on this link and watch the video because it's kind of interesting. They zoom in from the, all the way outside the microchip into the microchip and you can actually see physically the structure of the data. Now it is so tiny, uh, the my the micrometer, which is one a millionth of a meter or 0 0.001 millimeter micrometer level, which is like uh, the thinnest of a hair. And this is the image here zoomed in from something like this. If you zoom in from something like this, you go all the way into here. And this is how the zeros and ones are kind of stored. The thing is, it's not just zeros and ones. There is, you can see the structure here. There's more, this particular structure to it that actually controls the data with things like the logic gates to actually be able to process the zeros and ones in the logical computer processing way that we are familiar with. So that's the one more kind of material view of the data. And then there's also the more uh, sort of human level, human interpretable data that we talk about in our everyday today, which are these databases, these kind of figures that we get, um, you know, in our studies uh, and so on. When we're talking about, for example, better data needed to defeat misinformation, what data are we talking about? We're not talking about just com more computer processing power, right? We're not talking about a better um, uh, spell checking function of the Microsoft Word, although that is data. The Microsoft Word is a program, is it's data. Everything stored on the computer is considered data. It's the stuff on the computer, the data on the computer. Um, but this data here is what? The reliably, carefully recorded information. And usually about things in the world at that level, if we're talking about it, but of course it can be about 
um, other things as well. And in this section here, I'm going to also talk a little bit about algorithms because this is a kind of a term that has come out a lot and I think would be uh, useful to share and we'll go deeper into it this later in the semester. So algorithms are components of software programs that carry out a particular function or set of functions. So it was, we were just talking about the um, uh, identifying words that are misspelled. This is a function of the larger program, Microsoft Word. Now you can think of the algorithm as a particular program as well. And that's kind of part of the tricky question I had asked earlier. You know, how many programs do you see in this picture? It doesn't really matter how we think of it. Uh, as long as we understand what's going on. So you can use multiple terms to describe the same or different things. So the algorithms are components of software programs that carry out a function. So this is a very general definition. So the spell checker or Microsoft Word is an algorithm. It has to go through every single word and then match to see if that word exists in a dictionary. And if it doesn't exist in the dictionary, then it's either misspelled or, you know, it made it up. But of course, other kinds of algorithms, so something like identifying customers that have visited the store once a week on average. So suppose you're capturing everybody, how many people walk in your store every day and um, you know who they are. You can identify it. I know that John came here yesterday and I know Mary came here uh, on Tuesday and on you know last Wednesday. And then once you capture that data in your accumulator over time, you can calculate how often a person comes to your store. Oh, John comes here once a week on average over time. Lucy comes here, you know, four days per week on average and so on. So processing that kind of information, that, that data is the job often of an algorithm. And algorithms are technical models of how to evaluate reality and make decisions as well. So it's not just a way to process data, it's not just a function, it's a way to see the world, to highlight particular aspects of the world and not others. So for example, the Google or other web search engines algorithms to retrieve and order the results of the best pages when a user types a query. So let's say you're looking for Martin Luther King information you go to web search engine like DuckDuckGo, you type in, you search Martin Luther King, all the results, some magically, seemingly a bunch of results of pages come and are listed in a particular order. Um, well, how did that happen? Well, there was an algorithm. You can think of it as a program, algorithm, sets of algorithms um, that evaluated the information you typed in here and then ranked all the other pages that they had in their database of all the web pages that exist in the world that they have access to and then put in on top the first ones that they uh, thought was or the program thought was most relevant the program evaluated to be most relevant so um is does it have to be this is this some kind of ultimate truth is this the first and best page for somebody looking for martin luther king information well not necessarily right maybe i wanted to see something else and not these kind of standard um web pages i wanted to see something uh, more like uh, some personal information about martin luther king like what you know his conversations with his wife or whatever um so this was these were not the best results for me so this is what I mean. It's a way to view the world, a way to view what's important and relevant and how to assess uh, and how to make a decision based on what we emphasize. And that is why algorithms have been called weapons of a math destruction and have received all kinds of criticism nowadays because they essentially control uh, what people see, what people understand to be true, and the information that people receive or don't receive, and so on. So they're kind of problematic in our uh, world of IT and social activity today. And this is why I bring this up here, and hopefully we'll talk more about this. Uh, but that's it for this one, and I'll see you next time.